welcome everybody. So, so far what we've done in bonding is we've spoken about um, all of the Lewis structures, the um, things that you can do with Lewis structures like shapes um, and resonance and polarity and sigma pi bonds and hybridization. And one thing that I want to talk to you and touch on before we actually go on to intermolecular forces is bonding strengths, uh, bonding enthalpies. Um, and how they relate to different characteristics of the atoms and the types of bonds that we see. And so the first thing, if we look at the table over here on the left, something that you will see, if I can just change the color here really quickly, um, something that you will see is that as we increase the number of bonds, we actually increase the bonding strength or the energy of the bond. So for example, if I were to look at a C single bond here, versus a C double bond and a C triple bond, look at what happens to the bond enthalpies. It goes from 348 to 614 to 839. And what this means is that it would require more energy to break that bond. And that also means that more energy is released when the bond is formed. So that's one thing that's important. The other thing is when we look at um, how different atoms affect the bond strength. And so, for example, a good comparison to make here would be with the halogen series, CF, CCL, CBR, CI. So when I look at those, what I see is that with CF, um, F being the smallest of the halogens, the bond is stronger. Um, it takes more energy to break that bond. CCL, it, CL is larger, so it takes less energy. CBR, same type of trend, CI is the weakest of them. And so you can see this when you look at these other comparisons, how that works, those, those truisms will hold. Now, you can also calculate the bond um, or the delta H of a reaction by using bond energy. But notice that it's reversed here. It's bond energy reactants minus bond energy of the products. So for example, if I were to do something like you know CH4 plus 2O2, yields CO2 plus 2H2O, this balanced combustion reaction, I could find out what the delta H of the reaction is by doing bonds broken, bond enthalpy of the reactants, minus bond form, bonds formed, bonding enthalpy of the reactants, uh, products. But to do this, I need to write out the Lewis structures. And so CH4, you know, if we just zoom in here, is C with four H's. O2 is O double bonded to O, and we're going to draw two of them because it's O2. CO2 is C double bond O like this. And H2O is two of these. So let me zoom out in case you're writing this down. You can see everything all together there. So now if I want to find out the bond, the, the energy change of this reaction, I would do the bonds broken. So the bonds broken, we break CH bonds, we break four of them. So C bonded to H is 413, that's at the top here of the chart. So we're going to do 413 times 4. So I'll do this work over here, I'll make this less, um, just like this, here we go. So we're going to do bonds broken, so 413 times 4 plus O2 which is 495 times 2. So now we have so now we have those. And then we're going to have minus the um, bonds formed, the products. So we have CO2. So C bonded to O, double bonded O is 799 times 2. Um, minus, because again, we're subtracting all the reactants. Um, all the, and all the products, sorry, H2O, OH here, if we find it, OH is right up here, 463 times 4. So now we can work out this, and please do this and tell me what you get for this, but you should have an exothermic reaction. And I do this problem with you, and I want you to know that people have this misconception about bonding. You know, they kind of think of bonding as if, you know, oh, you know, if I eat something, there's food stored, there's energy stored in that food, and I get energy from that food. But really what's happening is your body is using energy to break down the bonds in that food. 
and then you're creating new bonds. It's the formation of those new bonds that's releasing the energy. This is a combustion reaction. It required energy to start the reaction, the activation energy. You can find that activation energy by, you know, taking those bonds that 413 times 4 um, plus 495 times 2 and figuring out how much energy it took to break those bonds. But then we form new bonds. We form the C double bonded to the O. Look at how much energy that bond has. That's almost 1600 kilojoules right there. And then forming the water bonds as well, that's another set, that's another, um, you know, almost 1800 kilojoules right there. So there's a huge amount of energy released compared to the energy that it took to break apart the initial reactants bonds. Heat changes in reactions, they're a sort of um, balance between bonds broken and bonds formed. If it took too much energy, or it took more energy, I should say, to break the bonds, then energy was released when you formed new bonds, you will see that, in fact, um, the, the, um, the reaction will be endothermic. Okay, so we can practice some more of those in class. Those are important to be able to do. Okay, the next slide is on bond length. And what we notice about bond length, and I've alluded to this before, is that when we increase the order of the bond, single, double, triple, called the order of the bond, that the bond gets shorter. And so a triple bond is shorter than a single bond. You can see that in this next pair here. Triple bond is the shortest. Um, but we can also compare bond length with different sized atoms. So for example, I could compare like a CF bond length to a CCL to a CBR to a CI. And I can look at the bond lengths for them. So what do you think is going to be the longest there? Think about that one. We'll talk about that too. Okay, um, here's some flow charts for you. This sort of goes through, runs through the general ideas behind the different kinds of bonding. We're going to touch on ionic bonding um, coming up. We'll do, uh, sorry, metallic bonding. We'll touch on that. We'll do a whole um, section in the notes on metallic bonding. Also polarity, the idea of looking at polarity and saying is a molecule polar or nonpolar, um, do the dipoles cancel or not, is there a lone pair in the central atom. Okay, so I just want to introduce intermolecular forces to you and then um, next video we'll talk about intermolecular forces in detail. So intermolecular forces, they're only found in molecular substances. So that means that you have to have a molecule. Things like, you know, CO2, H2O, HF. You'll never find this in ionic compounds. So if you have NaCl, intermolecular forces do not apply. Now, intermolecular forces, they're much weaker than you find in a covalent bond. You have two covalently bonded um, atoms, like H bonded to F. That's called an intramolecular. It is a strong covalent bond. These intermolecular bonds, or forces, they're much weaker. What they really determine, and the main thing that you really need to be aware about, is that they determine the boiling points and melting points. And general rule is, the stronger the forces of attraction, those IMFs, the higher the boiling point's going to be. So whenever we boil or we melt something, we break those IMFs apart. So you boil water, you break the hydrogen bonding in the water. You break apart CO2, you, you boil it, you sublime it, you're breaking the London dispersion forces. The stronger those intermolecular forces are, the more energy it takes to break them, the higher the boiling point. Um, if we were to condense a substance, so go from a gas to a liquid, then we're actually forming intermolecular forces. Now what you're going to see is that all these intermolecular forces, and I'll come back to this again and again, they're all based on partial positive and partial negative charges. So you know, you'll see this, it'll be like, um, you'll see, London dispersion forces, even though they're nonpolar, guess what? They're based on partial positive, partial negative charges that can emerge for an instant in a nonpolar molecule. Hydrogen bonding, hydrogen and an electronegative element like fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, we're talking about stronger intermolecular forces there. Dipole, dipole, between two polar molecules, we have that positive negative attraction. So next time I'll go through the types of intermolecular forces with you um, and all the details related to it. All right, thanks so much for watching.